and and I'm not an expert because uh, as as radical movements go, we create them as we uh, move along, and I think um, imagination and creativity are more important than than anything else. So I wouldn't like to hold back movements by suggesting that they move in ways that I recognize and that I, I've experienced. Uh, but at the same time, I think it is important to draw from historical experience. And, you know, for example, uh, the uh, bus boycott uh, and, you know, the campaign against uh, racism in transportation. Uh, uh, those who supported that campaign, or maybe we're not alive when it happened, but, but still draw inspiration from it, should look at um, you know, what's happening in occupied Palestine. And uh, the fact that last uh, fall, young Palestinians um, call themselves the Palestinian Freedom Riders after uh, people, young people in the US uh, in the 1960s who called themselves uh, Freedom Riders and they boarded uh, uh, buses uh, in occupied Palestine that are only designed to transport Israeli settlers. And so, and they were arrested. Uh, so I think that, you know, that kind of um, trans-historical, transnational solidarity can be really powerful uh, during uh, this period. And, and as someone who benefited from uh, um, movements, uh, a global campaign, as someone who's here today only because people here in Belgium and all over Europe and in Africa and in the, uh, the Middle East and in Asia and in Latin America came together around the demand for my freedom, I can um, say that solidarity, international solidarity, is so central, and I can uh, tell you that um, I was in I was in Palestine last um, June, and I was talking about the fact that when I was in jail, I received messages of solidarity from people all over the world, all over Europe, uh, from um, Germany, East and West, and as a matter of fact, from East Germany, I received over a million postcards from little kids. <laughs> and I go back to Germany today and I meet the grown-ups <laughs> who tell me how important it was for them as children to participate in that effort because it made them feel as if they were part of something you know, really important and really um, global. Um, but when I was in Palestine, I mentioned that I had gotten letters from prisoners as well. And among the prisoners, I mentioned a, a, a message, a particularly poignant message I remember receiving from Palestinian prisoners, Palestinian political prisoners, who had signed a message of solidarity to me that was smuggled out of uh, the, the, the jail where they were and was brought to me in my jail cell. And then, um, I guess the word got around, and, and this uh, man came up to me a couple of days later, and he said, you know, I was one of the prisoners, uh, you know, who signed that um, solidarity message uh, 40 years ago. And it was really, you know, wonderful to be able to embrace him in the free world. Uh, and, you know, as, some, as people who never knew each other, and 40 years have gone by, we still felt this really, you know, powerful, um, um, intimate uh, sense of uh, connection. And to me, that's the challenge of this uh, period, to create that kind of intimacy across borders.